Okay. All right. You guys ready? One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again back to another date in the life of a miner. And today we are going to a fan favorite. We are going to Lyria. I have actually started mining in Lyria recently. I did not know. I don't know why anybody hasn't told me that Lyria was such a hotbed for the best mining experience I think I've had in this game, to be honest. The rocks that I have found there are very large, which to be fair, size is irrelevant, but I have found such good resources and I did not realize this. Tungsten has good effects, but tungsten by itself is a zero, zero material. And what I mean by zero, zero material is that it is essentially a material that has no resistance and no instability. And if it does, it is a negative to any other materials that it may be clumped with. And aluminum also does not have very harsh materials like stats to mine, but aluminum and tungsten both have very, very good cluster factors. I never realized this. Now, if you guys don't know what cluster factor is, cluster factor is what causes materials to lump together, I guess you could call it, where like when you fracture a rock, that sub fracture, like how pure the deposits are, like whatever percent of whatever is, like that's what I'm talking about. So they lump together really good. Now you're probably wondering, well, I don't really care if those lump together, Great Fox. Well, that's true, but hear me out here. If they like to stick together, right? Like aluminum likes to make pure aluminum pieces, then that can be really helpful because now if the aluminum or the tungsten wants to stick together, that means the other materials that it is now paired with will also be in pure quantities, right? And this is exceptionally good, I have found, when mining things like festinite, beryl, borace, bexalite, terranite, right? These are all absolutely amazing when paired with this stuff. Um, tungsten has a obnoxiously high density for what it is. It's, it's, oh my God, it's like 600 mass to SCU ratio, which I'm glad it's so bad because that means if something is a percentage of tungsten, it takes 600 mass to get one SCU of tungsten, which means it's not so bad to pick up other materials in it. Since now I won't pick up as much tungsten as I will other materials. I also have kind of sworn off gold, unless it is a very large rock with a high, and I mean a high percentage of gold, I am not bothering with it. And I would encourage you guys to do the same. I do not find gold worth it in the slightest because gold's density is it's like the same as tungsten it's like 600 to 1 so 600 mass equals 1 scu boy let me tell you something that is such a terrible return on investment however bexalite and terranite have pretty good ratios for that borace does too like of the middle three the laranite borace and what's the other one? Laranite, Boris, and I think those are the only two middle of the road guys. It is by far the best. Personally, uh, <laughs> I always thought this was funny. Elsewhere, because you have like nowhere and stuff like that from Guardians of the Galaxy, this is elsewhere. <laughs> I just always thought that was funny. <clears throat> oh, and I have the shields overheating thing, which is really annoying because it keeps saying that all the time but boris and laranite laranite does not have as good of a density to sc ratio or mass to sc ratio is what i like to say and ideally we want like as close to one as we can get so if you don't know the mass to sc ratio if you've ever looked at red monsters charts or anything like that what that means is the lower that number it means the less of the material we need to make an scu of something and that is absolutely what we are after and there is not a single thing to mine around here okay we're going somewhere else we're going to fall nine i'm just surprised there's literally nothing here not a single deposit i also can acknowledge the fact that i went from an area to mine that is exclusively orange to an area to mine that is exclusively white so this is not like the most prettiest place to mine, but I wish Microtech didn't have as bad a weather as it does 
Or at least you only got it in certain areas. Ah, there we go. That's better. Ooh, that's a big one too. Is it right here? Is it this one? Ah, yeah. So for you new miners, and there might be some veteran miners, I don't know this either, your RS signature on the left. So that tells you how big, and if you're like really nerdy into RS signatures, then like you could know what that means specifically a little bit better. But a high RS signature means that there are more large rocks there. So I knew with a over 10,000 RS signature, there was going to be a lot of large rocks here. Like it was, it was known. And that's ideally what I look for is those RS signatures that are like, you know, 10,000 or more. I have seen some 10,000s, don't get me wrong, that are, whoa, 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 way too fast. redirect some of that speed forward. There we go. Alright. These rocks don't look amazing, but we'll see. And if you guys don't know, what you want to do when you're scanning is ideally you want to be 200 meters. That's how neat close you need to be to get the scan to accurately determine what's in here. Is that a, a 155k rock? It is. Oh, oh, that's why. So don't let this mass fool you. This looks like a gigantic rock, which it is, but it is tungsten and gold, which have densities of 600. So that is not quite as big as it would lead you to believe. I mean, it's big, but it is purely that dense because of the gold and tungsten that's inside of it. Barrel. Oh, this rock here is an amazing rock. 22% gold, 35% Hephaestonite. That's, that's pretty good. I'll admit, that's pretty hefty. So if you guys don't know, I actually read the patch notes for 3.20 and the reason instability, you might have noticed it, is super, super obnoxious right now. Like absolutely absurd. That is not abnormal. That is actually intentional. That's not something that is messed up. They did that because in 3.20, they're gonna change instability where it scales with one rock size and two is made worse by laser power. So that will mean more powerful lasers will have a worse impact on laser instability. Which really, this all just feeds into their intent that they want crew mining experiences. Because the best way to counter instability, if you guys have not tried it, is multiple crew lasers. Like on my mole right now, if I had one person on each laser, instability would drop to almost nothing for my rock that I'm trying to mine which is exceptionally impressive. Gold estimate. Let's see what this gives us, even though it's 45% tungsten. I actually get quite a bit of tungsten, I'm a little surprised. Hmm. And the most amazing split of a rock, but you know, this is it's a pretty okay rock, all things considered. Gold. Oh, that's beautiful. 54% gold, 14% festinite. Oof. I'll take that all day. 40% gold is not bad. I mean, these have similar densities, so it's it's a fair trade, I would say. It's hard to tell because tungsten and gold have high resistance factors, but if Estonite has a high instability, oh, that's beautiful, that's perfect. So it's really hard for me to read these before the scan is over. Usually I'm pretty good about it. I could tell what's going to be in there before I even get the scan complete. Beautiful. See, finding something like Gold Bex or Terranite mixed with something like a Festonite or Barrel or something is probably one of the best splits you could possibly ask to find. Personally, in my opinion. I mean, right here we've got yeah, pretty much about seven SCUs of everything. More Hephaestonite than anything else. I'm not even going to take that. I don't think that's worth it. 
Tungsten, nickel barrel. That is a really nice rock. But the problem is I don't think I'm gonna be able to break that. I, I really don't. I would want all that Boris. I mean, that's enough Boris to fill me up, but if I don't have three surges, there's no way I'm breaking that. And I do, I have three surges. It's just a question of like, do I really wanna get out and put all my surges on there? I don't think so. I am gonna take this barrel rock just for the sake of time. I don't think uh, it's really worth it for me to whoa, 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 whoa. fly around and look for stuff. I really, I would, I would really want that barrel rock, but I just don't think that barrel rock is. I mean, the boreas rock is happening. Uh, it's a, it's a hassle of a rock to try to break. What's the Riker? Is it one? It is one. I didn't think I was going to need to use both of these. Pretty surprised. Pure inert materials. It doesn't even look that big. It's 300 mass. That rock looks huge. Oh, yeah. Pure barrel. It's rocks like this that frustrate me because, like, why do I need to bust this rock? trying to do this with my helix. I know better, I just don't feel like getting out of, out of the sea. But I would 100% know that this is like unrealistic with my helix. I typically do not try to do this at home. Ooh, well, that's pure tungsten, that's why it's so dense. So much mass. That's gonna be barrel? No. Nope. Tungsten, tungsten, tungsten. All right, well then. 155, I still can't get around how big that rock is. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're flying around anyway. Actually, you know what? Just for the sake of the video, we will break that 74K rock, or at least attempt to. I'll put an Optimax on it. It's going to give me enough Borace that it's going to fill up my mole, so why not? I mean, for a 30-minute run, which this could be, I have 14 minutes to break this rock. So I have plenty of time. To this one, right? Yeah. It has no resistance, so objectively, this isn't too bad of a rock to mine. Let's see what we can do here, guys. I've got faith in my ability. But we'll see. I hope I have. I hope I have the surges with me. I'm pretty sure I have surges with me. Oh yeah, I definitely do. Oh yeah, I do. Yep, yep, yep. For when I was making other videos, surge, 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 surge. Uh, controller keeps unplugging. We'll put three on. Refresh. That way we're getting our best. Oh, wait, almost forgot. 
almost forgot. I don't know how many times I've done this. Where I forget to turn off my ports. And if you guys don't know, you cannot change out your mods until ship ports are unlocked. And it is so annoying because you have to ride the slow elevator back up. I don't have to ride it down, but I have to ride it up. But yeah, when you get out, to have to run all the way over. And then, like, you put everything on the ground and you get your stuff ready. And then you have to walk the shame all the way back to the ship. Completely redo it. And you're just like, oh my god. It's so annoying. Alright. This is putting many, many mining skills to work here. Gadgets, modules. This is actually going to go up against my largest rock. Because the biggest rock I broke in my video when I made the strongest mining laser was actually much smaller than this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, too easy. All right. All right, let's get these on the ground. One, two, three. All right, we're in detachment. Well, that was all that surge had anyway. I'm glad I brought three. I don't need you. have to face forward there. two stampedes I mean a stampede of two Rikers but I would 100% run like three stampedes if they weren't bugged right now all right guys let's break a record let's see if we can break a bigger rock than 60k solo so surges have six shots in them 50% boost per surge that I use so that is 150 laser power and since it's 15 seconds each, we have a minute and a half to bust this rock. I am very curious to try this. Okay, this should be right around optimal. Let's, let's break a record, boys and gals. Catch the ladder, that way we don't take damage get to the hot seat. I think we can do this. I'm pretty confident. I mean, it's a pretty low resistance. I mean, the resistance is going to be sub 10. And then when the helix gets on it, plus the surges, it's going to lower it even more. Oh yeah, right at the optimal zone. Okay. All right. You guys ready? One, two, three. Not even a not even a budge. Not even a twinkle. Not even a twinkle. Is there something I can like? No. I'll try one more time. I don't think this is happening. Alright, so one, two, three, go. so that's a pretty large rock 74k I'm gonna take the walk of shame and go get my gadget come on little fella you did good it wasn't you it was me five hours later 
All right, these two rocks ought to be good enough. I don't want to sit here and roam around for the next eternity looking for a suitable rock. And this sucks because that's kind of the case here. You know, sometimes you find like really amazing rocks, but they're so big that it doesn't even matter. I haven't used a raw helix in a long time, so maybe that is just kind of what a helix is capable of. Usually I have a lot more ass behind my laser. Now these charge times take forever. Let's start putting a torque on my laser. self-fractured. It's adorable. Oh, let's start sucking up all this FS tonight. Now these are all gonna have to be self-fractured. Just let me just go ahead and switch. This is where like the perks of the mole come in handy for a solo miner is because now I have the ass and the front laser to break large rocks and that can come back to a rear laser and I can do all my sub breaks with it. Not the most uh, efficient, but certainly very effective way to do this. And this is why I switched lasers right here because this makes my charge window much larger and I know for a night especially that it likes to jump up and down all over the charge window. Oh. That is the power of building your lasers, right? Is you absolutely want the ability to have large optimal charge windows so that way when that does happen, I'm not stuck. Although I can't really see anymore. see a thing. Five. Then it's in my way. All right, let's go crack into the base.
does it? Don't want too much aluminum, I want just the bare metal. More aluminum in the barrel, which means I don't want it. It's gonna be a lot of aluminum. Yeah. That's a barrel. All day. And this should fill me up. Feathering the trigger like this because I want the optimal charge window to stay large. I don't want it to shrink. That's a barrel piece. That's a barrel piece. That's a barrel piece. All right, we're full. A lot of barrel, a lot of festinite, a little bit of gold. Not the worst, not the best. It's probably about average. <laughs> An average run, even though it took way longer than average to get it. And we're back home. That's what I'm talking about. A little bit longer of a trip than I cared to take. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Alright guys, well I would suspect this load is worth um, probably somewhere between 200 and 250,000. I wouldn't think it's going to be worth much more than that. We've got a lot of good stuff. We've got gold to offset the tungsten and put a little extra in there and then we have a lot of Hephaestonite barrels so that's going to be my guess of where this is going to land us. Let's see. Boom, yep, 225, somewhere between 200 and 250. All right, I almost sold that. Oh, well, that was close. Hey, back again, I see. Welcome. All right, guys, well, we will continue our quest for unobtainium. We will get our money refining, and hopefully we have better luck next time. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.